Don't you just hate the slow creeping outification of Lamborghinis? They've become so tame, haven't they? Remember when they were wild, angry things before those blasted Germans got involved and sanitised all the fire and brimstone? Of course, that is complete crap. Since Audi came on the scene in 98, we've had SVs, Superleggeras, and the mighty flames for the Aventador. The truth is, Audis have never been fiercer or better than they are in this Audi era. So why am I worried? about this new hurricane. Well, in the press conference, Lamborghini kept talking about this car being the most accessible super sports car, about its everyday usability. It's all very well, but I want my Lambo to be loud and noisy and mad. It's not meant to be a McLaren 650S, is it? So we're on the international launch of this car and there's a lot of journalists and not much time, so this is a very first quick drive. We've been on the track already. What I can tell you about that is it doesn't feel like a track car. It's a bit too heavy. It's a tiny bit too much understeer. It doesn't have that incredible sharpness of a Speciale on the track, which is sort of what you'd expect. But let's talk about the good stuff first. What can we really get excited about this car? Well. Still got a normally aspirated motor, which is great. 5.2 V10, 602 horsepower. Finally got rid of that horrible, clunky, single clutch manual paddle shift. Now we've got a proper dual clutcher, which transforms the car. The Huracan has also got a brand new chassis, mostly aluminium, but with a carbon fiber central tunnel and rear bulkhead which is 50% stiffer and I think 8% lighter. You can feel that too. We've got magnetic dampers now which is partly where that split personality that they talk about comes from because the car should be ride pretty well <laughs> but also you can dial it down to be as hardcore I hope as cars like that fantastic Gallardo Quadracorsa. So like modern Ferraris, all the controls for this car are now on the steering wheel and that's where you control the car's personality, I guess, with the anima switch. So you can go through Strada, Sport and then up into Corsa. That changes everything from dual clutch gearbox, engine, dampers and the four wheel drive system. There's a 70-30 rear to front split, but it can have as much as 50% through the front wheels and 100% through the rear wheels, which sounds good. It still feels quite like I'm driving a Gallardo. There's the same noise, the same sense of stability and grip, that slight understeer that you get from the four-wheel drive system, but also that ferociousness that the Lamborghini just, they just do it better than anyone. My biggest concern, I have to say, is the adoption, it's an option, but all of the launch cars are fitted with it, of dynamic steer, which is a variable ratio steering. So at low speeds, it's super direct, at high speeds, it slows down in effect. And on Audis and BMW's active steer as it was, it was horrible, really horrible. And it still is horrible in Audis. And I hate that they've put it on this car. And it, it's much, much better than I thought it would be but it's not right. So if you buy one of these, just get a proper steering setup. It's what the test drivers like. So biggest changes, well, really the gearbox makes a massive, massive difference. In auto mode and in sport mode, it's very, very smooth. In course, so there's a little jolt built in, but I quite like that. And it just makes the car much more seamless to drive. Other great improvement, the brakes, ceramic brakes on Lambos are always very strange sensation, no feel on the pedal and then bang, they grab and it makes it really hard to be progressive with the car. They've nailed that completely with this. Of course, when you wind it up, it's the V10 that dominates the character of the car. I love the noise it makes. On paper, this car is not as quick as a 650S, not as quick as a Speciale. It still does 0 to 200 Ks in 9.9 .9 seconds and 202. But on paper, it isn't as quick as those key rivals. But the engine's creamy smooth. 
with a real jagged, ferocious edge as well. It's just, it's a proper thing. <laughs> now throughout the day, my opinion of this car has changed from hour to hour and moment to moment because when I first got in it, to me the body control didn't feel as good on track and the balance felt very determinedly understeering. But I got frustrated with it, started to drive it quicker and smoother and better, and it sort of came alive. And uh, I've come to really enjoy it in the last couple of hours. It's not an oversteery car, it's not a Speciale clone, but it's got stability, grip, and it's got an accuracy with the throttle control through a corner. Not big, crazy gestures, but you can adjust its line. It's a different sort of buzz, I suppose, but it's, in its own way, it's just as rewarding as going completely loopy in a Speciale. Has the Huracan dumbed down the Lambo experience then? Is that creeping Audi influence real, imagined? Or is it something that's for the better? Well, it's a tricky car to sum up this. It is more usable, the gearbox is smoother, the ride is better, all of those things are true. It isn't scalpel sharp like a Speciale. It isn't as absolutely nutty fast as a 12C or a 650S as it is now. But when you start to really, really push the car, it is very, very exciting. So while it might lack that last degree of precision and feedback that I so love in a supercar, this is just the starting off point. God knows what the Huracan will be like in 10 years from now if it follows the same evolutionary path as the Gallardo. But I can't wait to drive the hardcore versions. For more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the Evo channel.